question that you can get back to us on the Facebook page as well as on the Twitter handle at SABC Newsroom. We're asking you, do you think that our communities and the world is overrun by drugs from caffeine to cocaine to even jelly babies these days? But now at the age of 15, you already had a criminal record. Busted by the drug squad for possession of an illegal substance. Now you would think that he would have learned a lesson, wouldn't you? The hardest lesson of all for an addict is that the nightmare is never over and the powerful seduction of just one more high never ever goes away. That is an exact take from the book by Steve Hamilton, a man who reached the true rock bottom of life with drugs. But after sober years, he dedicated his life to touring the primary and high schools, educating children about the rawness and harsh reality of a life addicted to drugs. Joining us now from our Seapoint studio is a former drug addict and author of I Want My Life Back, Steve Hamilton. A very good morning to you, Steve, and welcome. Morning. Thank you very much for having me. I would have thought that the, the book would have been I Want to Break Free, but you had another edition there. But before we start the, the interview, apparently you wanted to recite a poem for us. Yes, please. Um, I want to dedicate this to all the, the, the mothers in South Africa and the world, maybe. Um, <laughs> if I go back to my heavy addiction again, I'm going to send this letter to my mom, and it goes like this. Um, Dear mom, when you gave birth to me, you had dreams. You wanted me to be something special. I turned out to be your worst nightmare. We call it a drug addict and alcoholic. I'm sorry for uh, stealing your wedding ring and giving it to the drug dealers. They will never return it. Forgive me for saying I hate you millions of times. I never meant it once. It was alcohol and drugs in my head. Thank you for standing in the rain, waiting to see me while I was in prison. Where were my friends? Too scared, remember? When I was strapped down in mental institutions so many times, thank you for wiping the vomit from my mouth. Again, where were my friends? And mom, if I die, do not cry. Maybe I'll be free, but not because of alcohol and drugs. They'll split my brain from my skull, my liver, my kidneys, my heart will fail. And when I do the dance of death, mom, <laughs> when I die, the DJs will never cry. Thousands of Steves waiting to take my place. The dealers, my friends, they are dead or dying. They will never send flowers to my funeral. So I will send you three for that precious child that could never be. You see, mom, my first drug was free, my second, my third, fourth time was free. And then one day the dealer said, hey, little boy, it is time. You owe me your precious son, Steve. Bless you, mum. Oh, that's a wonderful poem there. But that obviously describes the life that you, lead, you led. Tell us more about that. Yes. Um, I, I, I took drugs for many, many years. And um, I've been watching your program today, and I'm, I'm very proud of what you guys are doing because it's time that we spoke out. Uh, I was clinically dead three times, and what I didn't realize was it was one drug in to get into the drug world and the rest of my life to get out. I'm now in rehab in my brain for the rest of my life, and I take it day by day. Um, I promised many times I'll never go back, and there's no tomorrow with uh, addiction. It's purely one day at a time, sometimes one hour at a time, sometimes one second. Because that high, um, I don't know if you can see my T-shirt, but drugs are cool, but they kill you. And that's the bottom line. And, yeah, it's day by day, and it's a long struggle. And I, I, I don't talk about my recovery much because, while well, I'm a living legend at the moment, because I'm still alive. Uh, a doctor said to my mother one day, yeah, your son will die before the age of 21. Well, the doctor was wrong, and I'm still sitting here. But he was right, I did die. Because a little part of you dies every time you do a drug. And one day you, you become soul dead. And when you lose your soul, it's, it's, it's a bad place to be tour a lot of schools, primary school, high schools, to teach children about this. Can you give us an idea of what you teach the children at schools? Basically what I do is I, I tell children my life story, um, how I fell into the trap of drugs, and then what, what it's like, um, it's basically what happened, what is it like, and then what is it like living with it today. And when I finish my shows, for example, um, I don't want my audiences to clap for me. You don't clap for people who rob their families first and then turn to crime. Uh, you clap for the heroes out there. And, and sadly, many of our heroes are also doing drugs, so it's, it's very difficult to find a true hero. And anyone watching today, and you're drug-free and alcohol-free, tobacco-free, you are my hero. Mm -hmm. Your book, I Want My Life Back, tells the tale of very real and raw experiences with drugs. What do you say to those young boys and girls out there today that just want to experiment? Um... I, I, never, I never thought I'd be a drug addict. And what I didn't realize, as I said earlier, um, 
one drug in and the rest of your life to get out. I've done the drugs. And I was speaking to someone just now, and, and if there was a safe drug out there, I would have found it, and I'd be the biggest dealer of it. But there's no safe drugs out there. And if you think about it, some of your biggest dealers in communities are chemists, bottle stores, and cafes, and then the guys on the streets. Mm. Now, in light of the drugs like we've seen Mercedes, and even today we talked about jelly babies that was found in KwaZulu-Natal, why do you think are kids being targeted by the drug dealers? You know what? Um, <laughs> sadly, I was a dealer as well. And, and what people must realize is that you, you want to get them for as young as, as, as young as you can and then keep them alive for as long as you can because you're going to make more money. And, you know, all they're basically doing is rebranding old drugs and making them... Um, for example, calling them jelly tots. I'm very wary to talk about this jelly tot story because am I promoting it or are we going to prevent it? Because there is a fine line between preventing and promoting. And in my line of what I do, in my motivational talks and that, one wrong word out there can kill somebody. I don't want to glamorize my life. It was not glamour. Um, if you go to prison, one day the prison warder will come with a key and he'll release you. With drug addiction, it's a life sentence and there's no keys to addiction. And then a final word to all South Africans, all mothers, all fathers watching this program today, Steve. You know what? The biggest advice I can ever give anybody is keep on looking in your children's eyes. Do you spend more time looking at your cell phone, your emails, or are you looking in your children's eyes? If you're not looking in your children's eyes, the drug dealers are. Be aware. They say the eyes are the window to the soul. It's a very true thing. Keep on looking in your children's eyes. Bless you. Steve Hamilton, thank you so much for your time, and God bless. Thank you, sir. God bless.